Hello, everyone. All right. Uh, so last session, we uh, completed the requirement illustration part. So now we know how to plan for the requirements, what all activities we do you know, during the first one week where the project planning is happening. And then we also understood the various techniques to engage the customers and understand the requirements. Okay. Now, parallel to this, simultaneously when you are understanding the requirements, you should also start documenting them. Okay. So there are some known ways in which you can uh, frameworks which you can learn to document your requirements. Because you know, it's not just a pure, uh, you know, uh, you're not writing a big paragraph in English or, or um, you know, um, explaining it that way. There are some frameworks which are far more efficient, which are more uh, pictorial and uh, which are more comprehensive to capture all your requirements. Okay. So the next few sessions would focus on those techniques how do we document our requirements? So primarily from a functional point of view. All our functional understanding that we have gained through the requirement elicitation techniques, how do we convert that into a, a written document, a BRD? Right? So that would be the focus of the, uh, the next few sessions. Okay. So uh, last session, I briefly introduced you to the various uh, techniques. So broadly, these four ways. Structured analysis, like I said, is outdated. So the data flow diagrams are, are never used. So at least I have not used in the last 10 years. So it's, it's that outdated. So, so uh, structured analysis is a bit dated. The data flow diagrams we don't really use them anymore. <laughs> it was more relevant in the earlier days where there were procedure-oriented languages, but we don't really use them anymore. So I'll cover that, but very uh, briefly, because you know you will never use that. Just that you know, since you are working as a business analyst, you be aware of the data flow diagrams and use that. But you know, don't spend too much time on that. Even for your interviews, uh, nobody is going to ask you to draw data flow diagrams or ask questions on that. Uh, you can safely ignore that. Okay. Now, what is more important is the uh, ER diagrams in that, because all our data modeling would depend on that. Right. So we need to understand about that as well. Okay, so today's and uh, maybe on Monday's session, we'll, we'll cover these two diagrams and then we'll move on to the object oriented analysis, which is use cases. Mm -hmm. That's the most important topic. Okay, uh, yeah. I have this document uh, which is a much easier read on, on to the data flow diagrams. And rather than go through the PPT, I would prefer to explain it using this time. So I think, you know, this uh, diagram aptly summarizes what a data flow diagram does. Okay. Now, so rather than calling it as one diagram, it's basically a collation of diagrams. So the overall data flow diagram, there would be multiple diagrams which you draw. And it's similar to like, you know, uh, what you're doing is you are, you are depicting the functionality at multiple levels of granularity. So the, you know, the, the topmost level is the, is the most abstract and that level covers the very high level view of what the system does, right? <clears throat> In fact, the whole system you will consider as one single uh, process, one single task. And then, you know, all the elliptical boxes that you're seeing here, elliptical uh, symbols, those are your external uh, actors who are involved interacting with your system, right? So most of the times you either give the input or take the output, right? If I'm using a system, I either provide some input to the system or I would take the output, either view it as on the screen or, or I'll take it as on as a report, right? But, you know, basically an output is coming out, right? So any of the external entities which are in, interacting with the system would either give input or take output. So that's all what you're doing at the highest level. And so you're considering the whole system as one single process, and then you're showing all those uh, external entities, interacting with them by providing input and output, right? Now, at this level, the, the detailed requirement is not coming out. So what you do is you'll break down this process into sub-processes. Right? So this one process, you're broken down into two processes, right? And give a little more details. So, it, you know, it's, it's something like that zoom-in feature. 
so if you zoom in you can figure out like like there are two more features in it right so you are drilling down and explaining the fun functionality in a little more detail right and similarly you you'll do that again for the next level right so you'll pick up each of those uh, processes and then um, you will expand, expand that uh, in, in, and explain it in, in a little more detail so it results in a, another uh, data flow diagram. So the more levels you go further, the more details you would get. So that the bottom most layer is the most comprehensive, the detailed step and the top most level is the most abstract level and giving you the bigger picture. Right? So you tend to create these diagrams uh, you know, uh, as per the need, so there is no uh, standard guidance which says that you know there has to be only a level 2 or level 3 DMDs but the general uh, norm is that you stop around level 2 or level 3 DMDs nothing more than that by the time you have uh, had that clear clarity in the process of what exactly uh, of how exactly the process needs to happen right so mm, uh, So first, let's look uh, look at some of the components of a data flow diagram. Right? A, a data flow diagram would have primarily have these four components: the external entities or the people who are using the system. Right? We represent that using this elliptical symbol. Uh, then there are processes. So any, any activity which is happening in the system is shown using this process box. It's, it's a rectangular box. And then you will mention what is the name of the process in that, and then also give it a give an identifier to it. Okay. <clears throat> then you would be storing some data in your system, right? So that uh, is shown using a data store, where in one side of the you know rectangular box is uh, you know is empty, is hollow, and and we call this as a data store, right? We will have the identifier and then the name of the data store. So that you can clearly identify what data is being stored there, right? and then the arrows which shows how is the data being, uh, you know, uh, transferred between systems, <clears throat> right? So, like I said again, this is a flow. You will start off with a level zero DFD, wherein uh, you will just consider the whole system as one single process, and all the external entities providing input or taking output from it. So let's look at a small example. Right? So let's say you, are, you want to develop a PISA information system, a PISA management system, whatever you call it as. So there is a customer who is providing you the sales order, right? And then uh, you know you would uh, you would uh, <coughs> uh, so you would process that sales order and uh, you would uh, provide the pizza along with the receipt then and the delivery note right uh, you would send the invoice and then we get the payment details as well so these are the interactions with the customer then the pizza information system would also uh, you know uh, uh, prepare a purchase order and send it to the supplier supplier the supplier would respond with the stock quantities and that are updated in your system, right? So these are the external entities and, and the whole system you are considering as one single process. Now what we can do is, we can break down this whole system into multiple sub-processes, right? So if, if I try to do that and then figure out what are the key processes that happen, I would end up with a level 1 DFD, something like this, right? So there are uh, six, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven processes which are broken down into, right? So the whole PRISA management system, I've, I've said that it comprises of these seven uh, uh, sub-processes and each one of them, uh, you know, uh, I'm explaining it in, in a little more detail here. So I'm saying that uh, the PRISA information system would have a sales uh, process wherein you'll take the sales order and then store it in your database. Then there is a production control process which will take in all the sales orders and then the quantities available and then prepare the schedule of production, okay, which is stored in your database again. Okay. Then you would prepare the pizzas based on the schedule and then the, you'll take in the recipes and then the, update the stock accordingly. Okay. 
then uh, there would be a uh, you know um, stores process which will determine the raw materials required okay depending on what raw materials are required you will you will uh, uh, you will you know create a purchase order okay you will purchase those uh, materials from the supplier right and then uh, you know you you would have a shipping module wherein you will send in the delivery note and the sales order then there would be a billing or accounts uh, process uh, wherein you take the payment and then the receipt and provide the receipt as well right so broadly these are the seven sub processes that i could uh, gather from that system okay so this is the level 1 dfd now what i would do is i'll break down each one of these sub processes again and then get the next level of details like if i pick up this purchase right now the purchasing order ordering the raw materials so it's it's still not clear about how the purchasing would happen right so first i have to create a purchase order and then send to the supplier and then the supplier will provide me the stock quantities right so all that i've covered at one single process but you know i can give a little more details so if i break it down it would look a little more like this okay so this is a level uh, you know uh, two dfd right so level 1 dfd had that seven sub processes and now for level 2 dfd uh, you know, I'm creating for uh, ordering the raw materials. There are two sub processes in the end. One is I'm creating a purchase order and sending it to the supplier, and and also storing those details. Then the supplier is supplying me the quantities, and then I would go and update my uh, database, right? So by this level, I think I'm clear. There would be like two screens: one for creating the purchase order, and one once you receive the delivery, you'll have to go and update your uh, stock quantities, right? So at this level, level two DFD for ordering the raw materials is good. I think you know uh, I, I'll stop here. For some cases, maybe if you don't have the clarity yet, you might want to get draw the next level of DFD and explain it in a little more in detail, right? So that's how you would approach the data flow diagrams. Okay. Now again, you are not going to create this anymore. So it's just that you know, just understand the structure. If you are given a data flow diagram, you should be able to understand it. So that's the level of knowledge you, you uh, require. Uh, I would, you know, in most cases, I would say you can safely ignore this. We are not going to deal with data flow diagrams anymore. It's an outdated technology, uh, outdated uh, method. Okay. Uh, yeah. So let's move on to the next topic, which is of interest to us, which is the ER diagrams. Right. Now, structured analysis consists of two methods. One is the data flow diagram, which shows how this data are processed in your, in your system. And the second one is how is data stored, right? Now, so we have this uh, concept called ER diagrams, which basically tells us how is data process, uh, how is data stored in our systems, okay? Now, first question, why do we need to store data in our system? Now, data is, <clears throat> we need to store data because, you know, uh, we want to retrieve it at a later point and, and then, uh, you know, uh, use that data, right? So, if you are not storing the data in a right format, which can be retrieved at a later point, so there is no point in storing the data, right? So, for example, let's say you want to figure out what all transactions has a customer performed, okay? So if that information is not available, then it's it's difficult to um, and this, then there's no point in maintaining all that transaction and order order information, right? You should be able to clearly, you know, uh, you, you, you know, you, you would generally store that in data when uh, store that data because you can use that at a later point, right? For example, if you have stored all the orders which a customer has placed. And maybe you know all the billing here you've done. You might want to retrieve it at a later point for various reasons again, right? So that's the main reason for uh, storing the data, right? So if it, if it is not useful for a later point in time, there's no point in in storing that data, right? So what ER diagrams does is it gives you an effective framework to store it in the right way, so that retrieval of the data becomes easier at a later point. Right. So let's say if you are uh, you are developing a shopping cart kind of application. 
So you can store all your customer information like his address, his credit card details, his preferences and then when you are placing the order you will use that information and then once your orders are placed then you will store that information as well. So you know there needs to be a structure. You cannot just write it into a notebook kind of thing and then store it. Right? So it has to be stored in a much more structured format. So that ER diagram gives you that structure of how the data should be stored. Okay. Now given that context, uh, so let's look at how a database is created. Right? How, so when we uh, have these databases in, in a structured format, uh, you know, uh, we can retrieve it. But how do we create that? How do we create that database? It involves these seven steps. <coughs> First step, we clearly identify what data needs to be stored. Okay. Now this is a step where we as a business analyst would play a major role. Right? So when we say we, I want to store all the customer information, we should be clear about what all are the details about the customer that you want to store. Right? Now <coughs> You, sh you should clearly understand what is the user requirement, and what what needs to be stored, and what what all needs to uh, be related among that. So all that uh, you know information that you are capturing would be the basis for creating the conceptual design or the high level design, which we do using an ER diagram. Okay. Now ER diagrams are primarily created by the architects, so we will not create the ER diagrams, though we are learning about how to create them and all. In a typical BA role, you are not going to create an ER diagram. So there are specialists who are experts in creating the ER diagrams, and they would do it. Uh, the data architects and the data modelers. So you will you will not uh, generally get into the ER modeling. However, we should be able to understand an ER model. So we would learn how a conceptually a ER model would look like. Okay. Then once you have that uh, ER model a conceptual framework for uh, storing the data, you would convert into a particular technology like you know Oracle or uh, SQL Server. So there are multiple technologies, multiple types of databases, right? So you know you have an Oracle database, you have a DB2 database from IBM, and then you have a SQL Server database from uh, Microsoft. So there are uh, multiple database technologies. So your ER diagram is uh, converted into that, uh, you know, uh, logical design of, uh, or, or uh, you know the underlying technology like DB2 or Oracle, depending on what technology you are using for your application. Okay. So once you once that high level uh, design is created, once your uh, database is created in, in your, that particular technology then you would uh, refine it further. So refinement would generally be do, done for two things. One is to uh, reduce the redundancies and make it more efficient, which we call it as normalization. And then bringing in the consistency and integrity checks. Right? So that you know all the data is related and, and uh, you know uh, uh, you're, you're putting in all those checks and balances so that the Data is not, uh, you know, deleted incorrectly, right? Uh, again, most of mostly it's a DBS activities. Your involvement would be very low in those. Then you would under create the underlying, uh, you know, database in a in a particular <coughs> uh, on a particular hard disk, right? You would allocate space and then uh, create indexes and, and uh, all those activities wherever required. And finally you will give access to the people who can, uh, who, who need to, uh, you know, uh, uh, <coughs> access the database, right? So the security controls are implemented. So these are the seven steps we usually, uh, <coughs> which happen uh, in the creation of a database design, right? And your involvement primarily would be at the requirement stage. So let's take a small example. Let's say you know you're creating a, um, uh, a database for um, for a bank's uh, systems. So let's say you want to store all the loan information, right? So then you're you're creating a new loan system. 
So you'll figure out you know what all information you need to store. So you need to store information about the customers, their loan accounts, what all branches do we have, what transactions are happening on on those loans. Right? All that needs to be covered as part of your specification. Then you would arrange this information into an ER model, which is a logical model without any uh, you know uh, particular technology, without getting into any particular technology. Then you will confirm with the client whether you know the ER model is correct. All those relationships, the rules and all are correct. Right? Um, then finally <coughs> You would convert it into a particular uh, technology, and then create the physical design, right? So that is how a typical uh, ER model is created. Now I have a small crisp document for you to read through, which makes it much easier rather than go through the PPTs. I would prefer to use this, right? <coughs> Today's session, I'll explain about the various components of an ER diagram. And tomorrow's session, we'll look at how to create one and then also learn about the interfaces, how to do the data mapping. Okay? We'll take an example tomorrow and then we'll get the final details. But today's session, we'll, we'll learn how to interpret and, and uh, understand what data goes into a data model. Right? I'll take this example about a hospital management system. Right? Now, let's say you want to create a system which will... Uh, broadly uh, capture all the information about the doctors right? and when a new patient comes in uh, the patient should be able to register himself and then he can uh, create appointments okay? so basically uh, here what you're allowing is uh, let me take a white board. let me briefly explain the requirement and then see how do we translate that into a ER diagram right so you're preparing a hospital management system okay and what does this do whenever a new doctor comes in you, you the doctor has to you know um, complete the formalities and then register into the system so you can enter all the doctor information okay let's call that as a doctor registration okay? a new doctor comes in so you capture all this information then when a new patient comes in Right? So he also has to register. So you capture all the details regarding the patient, whatever you want to capture. And then only after the patient is registered, you can create an appointment. Okay? So create appointment. Okay? So then you can also modify or update or cancel the appointment. Right? So all this can happen. Not updated modifier the same. So let's not get this. You can create, modify, or cancel an appointment. Okay. <coughs> then what? After the appointment is done, then maybe you know you can make a payment. Okay. So payment would also involve uh, you know uh, two components. Like you know, payment would have a insurance component and uh, the co-payment as well so you know it has those two uh, types of payment okay uh, anything else uh, yeah that's pretty much is the functionality what a hospital can do right now <coughs> for this kind of functionality right how do we go about creating a um, you know database right so like I said the first step involved is to figure out what data we need to store. Right? We need to do the re requirement analysis. Right? And if you look at the previous screens, I have told you that what are the user needs, what, what should go into the database. That is what we need to figure out. Right? So broadly, when you are creating each screen, you will figure out, you know, it, each requirement or each functionality, you figure out, you know, what data do I need to store. Right? So that you will have to clearly call out in your business requirements. Okay, for example, when you are when you are picking up this screen, when you are picking up this functionality of a doctor registration, you know you design your screen that my screen should look something like this, right? And then it would capture the name, address, details about his mobile number, his specializations, his time preferred timings, 
uh, you know, a lot of other details that you want to capture, his previous experience and all that. You now there would be some 10, 15 sets of information which the SME would tell you, right? And all that should go into your uh, doctor registration screen, right? Now the reason why you are capturing this is because you want to store it, right? Otherwise you would have not even captured it, right? So this forms the basis for your uh, for your database. So you clearly know that you know this is the doctor information that I need to store. Okay. So you're, when the, the when the architect is is creating the database, he will look at this screen and then say, okay, now these are the data points that uh, you know uh, that are required uh, to be stored in the system. So I'll better make sure that you know. When I create this screen, I'll, I'll store this data, right? Then, similarly, when you are registering a patient, there would be a screen for patient. So you would uh, capture the patient uh, name and <coughs> you know his uh, his diagnosis and then his previous history. There are a lot of details that you will capture. Right? So all that again has to be stored in your system. So as part of the requirements, you're purely coming in from a fun functional point of view. Each activity that your that the system is expected to do, the screen wise, you have, you, have, you have to capture the details as well, right? What information that we need to store. Okay. Similarly, when you're creating an appointment, okay, there would be one screen which will tell you, uh, you know, these are the data points. You'll have to capture the doctor information, doctor ID. Then you have to capture the patient ID. Then you will have the time. Right, and all those details has to be captured. Okay, so this would would lead to some additional pieces of information. Right, and making the payment again would have one more screen, which will show you know what is the payment part of uh, bill generation and payment. All that you know, maybe you know, there will be one two screens which will capture all the requirements. So broadly, from a requirement point of view, when you are looking, uh, you know, designing these screens or, or capturing the requirement for each screen, you have you have identified what data needs to be stored, right? So, <coughs> uh, you know, uh, the high level at a high level, you clearly know that these are the data points that you need to store. Okay. Now, when you are when you are looking at a database, right? So there are three main components which come in, right? You have entities, attributes, and relationships, right? Now attributes are nothing but the data points about each entity, right? So that's the reason we call it as an entity and the relationship diagrams, okay? Now, uh, <coughs> Let me briefly introduce all these three things, entities, attributes, and relationships, and then we'll understand how, uh, you know, we will be effectively able to retrieve this information, okay? Now, uh, entity, by definition, is any person, place, event, <coughs> or a thing, or an object, about which we need to store information, okay? So, <coughs> Look out for these kind of uh, things when you are uh, drawing any ER diagrams, right? Each of each one of them becomes an entity, right? Person, place, object, thing, or or a event, right? So these are the four things, right? Now based on your requirements, right? So you based on your requirements, figure out you know who are all the persons in your system. So you could figure out you know there is a doctor, there is a patient also. Is there anybody else uh, who's using your system or who's involved in your system? Nobody, so you don't really need to uh, uh, consider them as entities. Then, a place, right? So do you have any places over here uh, within the scope of the system? Uh, might not be, right? So it's all uh, one single hospital. <coughs> Uh, so there is no place, or maybe now uh, you will have to store about your info, you know, insurance card details as well, right? So this, the, you know, maybe you know this could be considered an entity, right? Then, um, then some object or a thing, like you know, a bill, 
a bill is a is a thing, right? So it's 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 a physical thing that you can see, and so you're storing information about that as well. And finally, some transactions like whenever you're creating an appointment, right? So that's a transaction or an event. Similarly, a payment payment is a event or a transaction which is happening, right? So we need to store information about that. So broadly, if you go by the definition, you will figure out what are all the entities. Right? So there is a doctor entity, there is a patient entity, there is an appointment, payment, bill and insurance company. So that's the first step that we do as part of ER diagram creation. Okay? You will figure out all those entities. So the first step is where you are uh, you're, you're figuring out all those uh, entities. Right? So <clears throat> go by the definition, figure out uh, you know what are all the people, uh, things, Transactions and and objects about which uh, we need to store information about, right? And once you have identified that, then figure out what data about each one of them that you need to store, right? So you'll have to store some information about uh, you know uh, about the doctors, about the patients, about the appointments, right? Now, what exactly are the details that you are storing? Would become your attributes. Okay. Now, most of these details would come in from those screens that you've looked at. Right. So you know, for creating a doctor, you have you have captured all this information. Now, where do you store all this information regarding the doctor? So that goes into the doctor entity. Okay. Right. So basically, all the related information uh, information related to the doctor you are storing here. All the information related to the patient you are storing here. So you know what the what the data modeler or the data uh, you know the technical architect who is designing the database would do is he would look at your uh, BRD he would look at you know what data you are you are capturing about each of those entities that he has identified right so he would look at each of those screens that you have created and then the data points and then he would <coughs> map it to the particular uh, entity right so that is how your requirement is getting translated into your uh, entities and then the attributes into that. Okay. Uh, so is this is this point clear? What because you know your role primarily would be in, in figuring out what data that needs to be stored. Right. How it's going to be stored, how an ER diagram is, is to be created and all would be taken care of by uh, the by the architects. So you don't really design a database. You only capture the information what is required at a, at a, uh, at a requirement level, okay, which would be translated into the ER diagram. Okay, so uh, the second point is you are capturing all the attributes. So you'll you'll figure out you know about doctor. I have to capture his name, address, city, state, is it code, phone number, page number, the primary sp uh, you know speciality, right? His previous experience and then his timings, whatever details that you have captured, uh, you know, in your uh, registration form or, or later uh, details, will ensure that that gets ca captured into your uh, your doctor entity. Okay. Similarly, when you are capturing your patient, you you also capture that. So not just that, you will also capture uh, you will not only capture all these data, you will also capture the metadata about each data point. Which is the, the, what is the type of data, right? Whether it's mandatory or optional, and then whether it's uh, you know, uh, uh, sorry, the size of the data as well, right? and maybe a brief description, right? So, uh, so this is basically the metadata, similar to what we did for in interfaces. Right? So you'll figure out all the data, each data point you'll figure out whether it's mandatory or not, what is the size it can be, what can it be, whether it's a text or is it a number or is it a date, right? All that would be covered as part of your uh, uh, metadata, okay? So uh, what you're doing is you're capturing the uh, entities first, right? So you're, you're deriving the entities from the requirement. Then you are also identifying the attributes for each of those entities that you need to store, right? And then 
<coughs> the next step of ER diagram is you are basically defining the relationship between these uh, various entities. Right? Now, if you have to understand why do these, why do we need these informations, right? Let's say you know all these uh, relations are not there, right? So you just captured the doctor information, patient information, and, and all those are like uh, you know available in your system, but there are no relationships, right? So obviously, you know, we will not be able to retrieve it much more effectively, why? Right? Because you know, let's say I want all the patient information to be retrieved. Uh, so uh, all the you know the payment made by this patient to be retrieved. Okay. Now, if I have not stored this relationship, I cannot link any of these payments to the pay, uh, to the patient. Okay? So obviously, it becomes difficult for me to retrieve that information. So there is no point in maintaining that information if you cannot retrieve it, right? So that makes the relationships critical. So the relationships needs to be identified to ensure that the information can be effectively effectively retrieved later. Okay, so that is the main intention of storing the data so that you can utilize it later. So you will ensure that you are you are capturing that information. Okay, so those are the three main components of an ER diagram: entity, attributes, and relationships. So entities are nothing but you know you go by the definition, identify one of those four persons, people, uh, you know the people, um, then uh, things, uh, places, and events about which you need to store. Those becomes the entities. Then the details about each entity becomes the attributes. Right. Uh, the other thing what we need to know is about a primary key about an attribute. Right. So usually. See, all this data finally goes and gets stored in as a. So at the end of it, all you're doing is you're creating a table for each of those entities. Like you know, doctor, there would be a table, and all the attributes that you have identified for the doctor becomes the columns. Right? So ID number, first name, last name, middle name, address, city, and all. Then any new doctor which comes in would become would be entered as a new row. Okay. So that is how your uh, databases would be, uh, your ER diagrams would be translated into the actual database. Do you, do you fairly get an understanding about how do we approach a database? You know, how how is this uh, from a high level, uh, you know, scope statement to requirement, and from requirement you identify the entities, and and from entities, how is it getting into the final uh, structure and then get data getting stored? Any questions? Are we creating? I mean. How are we creating this database thing with some tools? Right, there are some tools like you know, uh, Visio. There is a tool, right? And then uh, you know, there are there are some softwares which you can do. And but ER diagrams, I think you know, there's nothing. Uh, I mean, like you're telling us how to do this thing, but you're not showing us what tools we use to we use and how to implement them. Now, like I said, <coughs> in an ER diagram. All you are creating is uh, all your your responsible is to ensure that you figure out what data needs to be stored. Right? So only the requirements part. What is it that we need to store is what you are doing. Right? Now we are like I said, you are not creating a e, uh, ER diagram. Right? So you will never create an ER diagram. So that can be sure. Okay? Because you know you need that specialized knowledge about databases and and uh, you know. How to carry on the rest of the activities as well to create an ER diagram, right? So you are not expected to create an ER diagram, but whatever all details you capture would generally be translated into an ER model. Okay? Now, so your your output, which is your you know the screens that you are creating and then the data that you are identifying, would be an input to your ER diagram. And the second reason why we are learning about these ER models is. We should be able to look at an ER model and then understand what it means, right? So it should not be completely that we don't know what an ER model is and all, right? If if I show you this, you, you should be able to interpret. Okay, you no, know, there are there are six entities in this, and each entity about doctor entity. This is the information that I am capturing, and a doctor and an appointment are related by through, and these are the rules governing them, right? So at a high level, you should be able to interpret it. 
why do we need this? Where will we need uh, be using this? Maybe you now when we are working on interfaces, right? So when you are working on interfaces, we need to you know link it back to uh, uh, you know um, <coughs> where that particular data is stored. You have to look at your database and then say, you know what, uh, the doctor information is in this table, so pick it up from this table and populate the interface. So the data mapping part, we will use it. The second thing is maybe you now during testing, right? So when you're uh, you know when you're testing the application, maybe you now you want to understand what data is going and sitting in which table, right? So let's say you have created a new appointment, right? So the appointment should go and then be populated into the appointment table. When a new doctor is registered, it should go and then update the doctor into this table. So during testing also, maybe you now you want to have that high-level view, which table you gets populated with that data, right? So um, all those, you know, testing at the time of testing also you need some basics too. Uh, so you need that basic understanding of ER model, right? So you are not going to create an ER model, but you know, a high level view of how a data model looks like is something which is expected out of you. I, I hope that part is clear, right? So we'll, we we still are not done with this uh, topic yet. Uh, you you need to know a little more details, but you know, first try to understand what is your role in it, right? So, you know, ER models is, is, a, is, a, is a big topic, right? But you're not handling everything end-to-end uh, -end in it, right? Your part is only with the requirements. So, you're figuring out what data that you need to store about each one of these entities. And, and that comes in purely from a functional point of view as part of your BRD, okay? But later, Again, when you are doing your uh, testing or interface analysis, uh, you know this would help you out. Right? Understanding this would uh, would, would uh, you know uh, help you out where this data is coming in from or how uh, you know uh, what data we need to pick. Does that make sense? Sorry, who I, I didn't get who are, who was the person asking the question. Yeah, I was asking you about the two. Okay. All right, sir. Uh, I hope that gave you a little more clarity. Yeah, yeah, I got it. So we are not making any ER models, so we don't have to worry about the tools yeah. or any softwares. So primarily, we'll make the use cases. That is what we'll deal with in very detail, right? Now, the, the, the way we document the requirements is, is primarily using use cases. ER models are... <clears throat> are not something which we will draw. So our, uh, you know, analysis or our analysis of the requirement and then identifying all those uh, details would form an input to the ER models, right? So that is the connect, right? So unless you capture all those details, it becomes difficult to create an ER model. So that you'll have to understand and make sure that you are as elaborative as possible when you are capturing the requirement, right? So when there is a, like, let's say a, a doctor registration process, what all details do we need to capture from the doctor uh, when a doctor is created, right? So you should you should talk to the SME and then figure out, right? So because you know if you miss out any of those there, they obviously the the person who is designing this database, the architect, would not add in those details here into the ER model. So finally during testing, the customer would say, you know, you didn't capture some uh, you know the the customer the doctor's uh, appointment timings. So you'll have to go back and then start right from the start. You're, you'll update the requirement, then you'll, then the architect has to update the uh, the you know the ER model. Then underlying programs have to be updated. So a lot of change. Your responsibility is to make sure that the requirement is clear, clear and comprehensive, right? So you'll make sure that the customer is. Uh, you know, okay with whatever data that you are capturing and no data is missed out, right? So that is where you'll draw all those screens and try to create as, as close as possible to the uh, to the final requirement, okay? We still haven't covered about the business rules. That's another main part where you would contribute, right? So you'll identify, help identify all these business rules, right? Now, uh, I'll, I'll come out to that in maybe, you know, the next session. Uh, because now, <coughs> first part, let's understand about uh, 
the entities and the attributes and then we'll look at the relationships in the next session okay so entities again um, as as the definition goes the architect would look out for information about uh, whether it's a person place event or a thing right and then uh, fill in those uh, you know or create those entities for you so your your uh, you know the screens that you have created and then the high level information that you have captured as part of the requirements would form a basis for create identifying the entities and the attributes okay so this part of it is clear so if i give you a small requirement would you able to figure out you know how my what all details do i need to capture about on each screen and uh, you know uh, how is it related to one another so this topic will continue in the next session we still have to understand the relationships and then we would take one full example into an example of uh, where we have the high level requirement from here we will we'll create those screens and then finally create a uh, er diagram for that as well right so we'll we'll go through that process i think that will give you a lot more clarity so you'll, you'll understand what you are doing what is an uh, you know uh, the data modeler doing You'll, you'll get that clarity uh, in tomorrow's session. Right? So this topic is still not covered. We still have to understand these relationships. Now all we have tried to understand is how do we understand the requirement, and that from that identify the entities and attributes. Okay. We still have to work out on uh, understanding the relationships, and and ensure that all the business uh, rules and conditions are are translated into this uh, ER diagram. And then we'll also look at an example. 